So today we're going to be talking about eutrophication. Eutrophication is a process where massive amounts of nutrients in excess enter water bodies, usually nearby things like farms. And the reason that is, is because people like our farmer here, they spray their crops with fertiliser, and fertiliser contains high amounts of nitrates. Now when it rains, these easily run off into nearby streams, and they can also run off into the groundwater. This has a huge impact on the pond and river life in the nearby waters. So let's take a closer look at what goes on there. So here we've got our water body. As you can see there, we've got some vegetation, we've got some little fish, maybe some signal crayfish, which we might come onto later, and we've got algae which is naturally occurring in all water bodies. It's a very, very small, almost unicellular, that means one-celled organism, um, unicellular plant that just floats around on the top of the water. So what happens in the process of eutrophication is our nitrates enter the water and the algae takes this up. The algae uses it to grow and grow and grow and what we end up with is hundreds and hundreds of these algae. And what we call it when we've got loads of algae is an algal bloom. Because the algae has bloomed and flourished so much, it's just basically it overtakes the whole river. So if we take that to a huge scale here, the algae grows and grows and grows. It overtakes the river. It's just lying there on the top of the water. And what does that mean for these plants at the bottom? Well, the energy from the sun is now being taken up all by the algae. And it's actually stopping these organisms at the bottom here getting any sunlight. And as we all know, most plants, <laughs> well, all plants, need sunlight to grow. And our fish as well, they can't get the right levels of nutrients because there's not enough sunlight, they're not warm, they haven't got enough food. And this is, in fact, fatal to our pond life underneath the algae. So bye-bye fish, bye-bye vegetation, there's nothing there but algae and nitrates. And that's all because we, humans, have created such a demand for farming and high-intensity farming that farmers need to keep spraying their crops with more and more fertiliser and this keeps entering our water system and it's really bad for the other organisms that live in the water. So there we have it. There's our process of eutrophication. Nitrates from fertilisers and farming run off into nearby water bodies. These cause massive algal blooms, which in turn can be fatal to the pond life underneath them because they're stopping that life from getting sunlight. But is there a way we can spot this happening before it gets too late, before all our fish and before all our plants die in the water? Well, there are some species we can use to see how polluted water levels are. These species are called indicator species and they're really sensitive to environmental change so they're really good for seeing if the water or the air is just a little bit polluted or really heavily polluted and sometimes we can even tell what it's polluted with. So let's have a look at them now. So here we've got some examples of our pond and water indicator species. Now, as we've already seen over here on the right, what do we think about this water? Is that clean water or is it polluted water? Well, like we already said, there's a lot of algal blooms at the top, so that means there's a lot of nitrates in the water due to eutrophication, which you've just learned about. But also in the water, there's these sludge worms, and sludge worms indicate that the water is very heavily polluted. Now on the other hand, over here, we've got some super clean water. And the reason we know that is because it's got lots of mayfly larvae in it. Now, what these species mean is, we can send an environmentalist or an ecologist to go have a look at our water and say, oh, there's a sludge worm in there, so the water's really polluted. So if that's the case, then we can say to farmers, 
you know, don't spray your crops with so much fertiliser or you're going to have to pay a fine now to clean the water or to spray that amount of fertiliser. Or it tells us that our water is really clean and it's safe to drink, it's safe to use. Now these are just our pond life examples. There's also things like lichen, which you find on trees. They're kind of that sort of weird, mouldy looking, crispy thing you get on tree bark sometimes. And lichen is a really good indicator of the presence of sulphur dioxide in the air. And you can even get some that go different colours for different things in the air. But that's something maybe you could look up at home as another example, because you will need to know it for your exams. So there we go. We've had a quick recap of eutrophication and even an introduction to indicate a species. So hope this has helped and happy revising.